In theory, selling a trending product is great, but when that trending product inevitably stops trending, you'll be right back to square one, trying to find that next elusive winning product and constantly in this cycle that you can never escape. And if you're somebody who's trying to start an online business to quit their job or to have financial security, you'll never be able to do that if you're constantly in this cycle. Now, at one point I was there as well. And it wasn't until I found this three-step strategy that allowed me to build real long-term businesses that then gave me that financial security, financial stability, and really allowed me to quit my job about six years ago. Now, before we get into step one, I do want to announce that I'm bringing back the free one-on-one -on -one mentorship giveaway. I know you guys used to love it a lot, and so we're gonna be bringing it back now. So all you have to do to enter is go down below, drop a thumbs up, leave some sort of constructive comment, and be subscribed, and you'll be entered to win. And I'll announce the winner in my next video. With that out of the way, let's jump into the first step of building a real long-term business using dropshipping, which is, of course, finding the right product. Now, if you shouldn't be selling trending products, then what products should you be selling? When I reflect back on every successful brand that I've built, Every product I'm selling has these three traits. First of all, it solves a problem. Second, it's a problem that isn't going away anytime soon. And lastly, it's a problem that a ton of people deal with. Now, the reason this is such a successful formula is because you're guaranteeing yourself demand. You're guaranteeing that the demand isn't going away anytime soon and you're guaranteeing a giant audience. So when you check all those boxes, the only thing that you have to do is effectively market the product because you already know that there's guaranteed demand for it. Now, I've got a few other videos on how to find these products, so I won't dive into it a ton here, but if you do wanna check those out, I'll leave a link up somewhere around here for you. Originally, when I first started dropshipping, I too was trying to find these trending products to make a quick buck on and didn't really know what I was doing. But it wasn't until I started finding products that had real long-term value that I started to find real success. And when it came time to make the decision of whether or not I wanted to quit my job based on this online money that I was making, the trending products just weren't allowing me to do it because it was just too unpredictable. One day I'd be doing $10,000 in sales and the next day it would be gone. It was just crazy. And so when you find products that actually have long-term value that solve a problem that a ton of people deal with, you're able to build real long-term businesses and not have to worry about the financial insecurities. And it wasn't until I found that product that I felt comfortable enough to quit my job. A lot of people ask me, what kind of potential can I see with dropshipping? Where can I take this? What can I do? And if you're selling a trending product, the only thing you really can do is sell it until you can never sell it anymore. It's milking it till it's dry. But on the other hand, when you find a product that you can sell for years and years to come, it opens up a world of different options for you. You can either grow it on your own and build it into a real long-term business, just like the likes of Gymshark or the Blender Bottle did. Or you can decide to sell the brand. But to sell it, you have to have a business that someone's able to buy and then grow it. And if you're selling a trending product, someone's gonna look at that and say, you know what? I don't know if this brand's gonna be around the next couple of years because well, if this product goes out of style, I don't have a business. So focus on building a strong foundation and the strongest foundation is your product. Make sure your product has guaranteed demand for years to come and has a ton of people needing that problem solved. That brings us to step number two, which is to build an incredible website. I see time and time again, people cheap out on the website that they build and they do things on a budget. Now, I understand that everyone's got a budget they have to work with, but I often see people spending a lot of money in areas where they don't need to and not much money in areas where they probably should. When I first got into dropshipping, I just kind of saw the website as a transactional thing. It's just a way for people to come and buy your product. But the website is so much more than that. It conveys emotion, it conveys feeling, and it tells the person on the website what your brand is all about and who you are as a company. Now, it can be a little bit difficult to conceptualize this in an online world, but just look at going into the mall. Every single store that you go into has a different look and a different feel, and that look and feel helps to convey the message that that brand wants to convey. For example, when you go into Walmart, there's a ton of sale signs. There's a ton of discounts going on. And the reason is because, well, Walmart is a discount store. On the flip side, if you go into Louis Vuitton, everything is crisp, everything is beautiful, everything is high-end materials. And the reason for that is because that's the same kind of quality that goes into their clothing. It's a high-end brand, so when you come into the store, they wanna convey a high-end feeling to you. 
A really cool example of this is actually something that happened to me recently. I was with a friend and we went to the Porsche dealership here in Vancouver. Now, when we went to the sales desk to sit down with the sales guy, I went to pull out the chair and immediately both of us realized something. And what we realized were these chairs were ridiculously heavy. And when we went to pull them out, it was like, you need a two hands. You gotta really put some weight into it to pull these chairs out. And I actually made a comment to the sales guy, like, God, these chairs are really heavy. And the way he replied back to me was really interesting. He goes, of course, everything is high quality. This is Porsche. Now in that moment, he wasn't agreeing with me that the chair was heavy, but in fact that the chair actually conveyed a feeling of quality. And lo and behold, what is Porsche known for? Their superior build quality. So every aspect of the dealership had been thought out. Everything that you looked at, everything that you touched had to match the Porsche brand. So when a person comes into the dealership and is looking to buy a car, they come and they sit down at that sales desk to be sold on a $200,000 Porsche. They go to pull out that chair and they're like, yes, this is Porsche. This is not Honda. I'm not walking in and they have, you know, folding chair kind of things in there. And this is something that we can take and put into the online business world as well. And there's a few different ways that we can do that. The first of which is our font. The font tells the person what to feel, what emotion to feel when they read something. If you look at a font and it's kind of like a hand drawn looking thing, that tells me that it's fun, that it's not taking itself too seriously. On the other hand, if it has a newspaper font, that tells me that there's a seriousness to it. So when you're building your website, choose a font that conveys an emotion that you want your buyer to feel. The next way that we can convey this emotion is actually in the colors you use. And there's something called color psychology, which essentially says that different colors convey different emotions and bring out different feelings within people when they see them. And it's quite interesting because these colors can actually vary from culture to culture. So make sure to do research on whatever market you're selling to. For example, here in North America, the color red conveys love. It also conveys danger, but it's a strong sense of passion. For example, if you're selling a health and wellness product and all the colors on your website are red, Buyers are going to be a little bit thrown off because typically health and wellness is associated with green. On the flip side, if you had a Valentine's Day store and everything was red, well, that would make sense because red to us conveys love. And this brings me to the third tip on the website, which is to build a website that feels like a real brand. And that's where your fonts and your colors making sense and feeling congruent with what you're selling comes into play because big brands wouldn't have these little things that throw buyers off. Another really easy way to make your website feel even more professional is to have custom photos on it. And it's the easiest thing to do nowadays. All you gotta do is order your product in from Amazon and take really good pictures. And when I say really good pictures, I don't mean that you need to have a whole photo studio or some incredible background. All I'm saying is grab your phone, put it on a white background, put it on a black background, put it on something that is visually appealing to the eye and shows off your product. You can even show it off in its atmosphere. You can even show it off in its natural environment. So if you're selling a beauty product, go in the bathroom, take some pictures in there. Don't overthink it, but just have custom content because when you do that, it once again elevates your brand in the buyer's mind. Now this brings us to step number three in building a long-term brand, which is to build community. Now you're probably listening to step one and step two and being like, okay, this is great and it makes sense and all, but how does this come into play in building long-term businesses? Well, it's because the most powerful thing you can do in building a long-term brand is have community. Because when you have community, people want to buy again from you. They want to buy it as a gift for a friend. They even want to recommend it to other friends. So when you're selling an incredible product and your website feels like a real business, people naturally feel more inclined to come back and buy from you again. On top of that, there's a few really easy things that you can do to build even more community with your audience. First of all, is have great customer satisfaction. And this comes in all forms. Your shipping times need to be fast, your customer service needs to be great, and your return policy needs to be appropriate for what you're selling. First of all, you need to be using UGC or user-generated content. This is content that feels like it came from somebody who bought your product and was so happy with it that they wanted to make a video or take some photos to show it off. 
Next is have great shipping times. There's nothing worse to building a community than making people wait two weeks or three weeks or four weeks to get their product. And if you don't know what supplier to use, I'll leave a link to Zendrop in the description. You'll get $200 in free credit and 50% off, which is great, but they have incredibly fast shipping times and is who I recommend to everybody and use myself. Lastly, you have to understand that people will want to return product. And if you simply say, sorry, we don't offer returns, people will just get upset. Now, with that being said, I do understand that when you first get into drop shipping, it's really difficult to want to accept returns because it can be a huge hit on your bottom line. So instead, a little pro tip for you is if somebody does want a return, typically it's for one of two reasons. Either A, they have buyer's remorse, and they just regret buying the product, or B, the product doesn't fit. Now, if the product doesn't fit, there's not a whole lot you can do, and is why I don't recommend starting a clothing brand. Now, if the person just has buyer's remorse and they just kind of regret making the purchase, instead of saying, no, sorry, you can't return the product and pissing them off, just send them an email and say, hey, how about we offer you 10 or 15% refund? And nine times out of 10, the person will say yes. You still make money because your profit margins are typically around 30% if you price your product properly, but that's a video for another day. And you maintained a happy customer. So now you can continue retargeting them with emails and they're more likely to come back because they had a good experience with you. Oftentimes, not only in business, but just in life in general, they say reputation is everything. And it's the exact same thing if you're trying to build a long-term brand. You have to keep each and every customer happy. Now, is it realistic to keep 100% of people happy? Of course not. But do everything within reason to keep the customer happy and they're gonna to continue to come back and buy again from you. So with that, don't forget to enter the giveaway. Go down below, leave a thumbs up, be subscribed, drop some sort of constructive comment, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.